Thank you, Steve. Welcome everyone to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the place which has become such a fortress for Spurs in recent months and the place this evening where old acquaintances reunite because Richarlison starts against Everton for the first time since his big money move to Spurs in the summer. And Michael Brown, you would not bet against the Brazilian being at the heart of things this afternoon. You wouldn't watch a an evening for him to go and set the tone obviously it's a great place to play football this stadium is sensational and what a game we should have this evening we are underway at the tottenham hotspur stadium the players before this match taking the knee this match as all the games in the premier league this weekend dedicated to the premier league's no room for racism campaign the message against discrimination still clear tottenham with a throw Midway inside their own half. They make two changes from the league win over Brighton, but three changes from the victory over Eintracht Frankfurt in the Champions League in midweek. Perisic, Doherty and Davis come in for Sessignon, Longley and the suspended Emerson. Tottenham with the set piece over on the far side. McNeil replaces the band Anthony Gordon in Everton's only change. Calvert-Lewin is still not risked from the start. He's on the bench. They are still beset by defensive injuries as well Everton the likes of Patterson, Holgate, Godfrey, Mina all still out. We will take you through the full lineups in a moment but Tottenham in possession just on the halfway line. Here is Ben Davis will play it back to Eric Dyer and as they knock it around that back three we can tell you that it's Luis in goal. The back three for Tottenham of Romero, Dyer and Davis. Ahead of them Doherty, Benson Kerr, Bouvier and Perisic with Richarlison the former Everton man. Son Heung-min, who scored twice in the win over Eintracht Frankfurt. And Harry Kane making his 400th Tottenham appearance up front. Tottenham win the throw on the halfway line as Everton clear. Everton with Pickford in goal. The back four of Coleman, Cody, Tarkovsky and Mikhailenko. Ahead of them, it's the revitalised, rejuvenated Alex Awobi. Idrissa Ganage and Amadou Anana with McNeil and Gray supporting Mopé up front. Tottenham in possession with Davis. Still midway inside his own half, down the left-hand side he goes in field to Hoybier, Tottenham who would move to within a point of leaders Arsenal with a victory here. They've won their last seven games in the Premier League at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's their best run since back at White Hart Lane at home back in May 2017. Tottenham still in possession, patient, working their way into the Everton half and then working their way back out again. We heard Antonio Conte saying in the build-up to this one, Michael, that the game against Eintracht Frankfurt took a lot of mental energy out of them. How do you expect them to approach these opening stages as Everton play the ball out for a Tottenham throw just inside the Everton half? I think you understand those comments. It'll be a game where you want to set the tone, you want to control the possession at your speed in case you are a little bit off the pace for playing in the week, but straight away Spurs controlling the possession, pushing up in the wider areas really high and it's it's quite a strange position for Dwight McNeil playing on that left-hand side because of Spurs' setup. He's got to go all the way back next to Mikalenko, and it's one position he doesn't like to be. So let's see how that comes out. Tottenham in possession over on the right-hand side. Perisic into the penalty area, down to the byline. McNeil gets across and clears away. And Tottenham will chase this. Headed all the way back by Eric Dyer to Harry Kane. Yes. We thought as though Everton would start with the back four, but good spot, Michael, yes. Dwight McNeil over in that left wing back position. So you've got Damari Gray and Mope up front, and then the three in midfield that we expected of Anana, Gay and Iwobi. So a little change in terms of formation, and it's just evidence of the form that Harry Kane has been in all season. The threat that they know so well of Richarlison, and the fact that Son has five goals in his last five games as Tottenham have the ball midway inside their own half. It's just going to be whether he stays there for a long period of time or it's just because in this setup you say, well, I'll stay safe, won't let them get in around the back of us, just then play further forward. But he's been there such a long period of time, it's a strange position for him, but super start from Spurs. Ball to the edge of the penalty area, here is Harry Kane, chest it down inside the box, Tarkovsky gets a foot in and will clear away out to the left-hand side, Chester down by Romero for Tottenham. Four minutes gone, nil-nil. The reason we can't tell you, listeners, whether Gray's going to stay there definitively, he might switch into a four and come further up whenever to in position. They haven't got the ball. 
Well, they have it at the moment. It's brilliant. Son finding positions. Another chance. Out on the left hand side, and Harry Kane's header is straight into James Tarkovsky, and it's behind for a corner to Tottenham. And that combination once again looking threatening. Everton can't get a touch at the moment. Son just finding space down that left hand side, crosses it. You know what their combination plays like. Kane heads it, but just blocked. Play short now, here is Son, into the penalty area, will play it centrally, now scooped in, looking for the return ball to Son. Everton get the foot in with Damari Gray. And Dwight McNeil moves over to the left-hand side once again, and we still can't tell you <laughs> whether Everton are going to switch to this forward position, because honestly, five minutes in, they haven't managed to get their foot on the ball. It is all Tottenham, nil-nil at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium here on Five Live. Tottenham who have lost just one of their last 19 Premier League games against Everton and they're coming forward now with Davis on the left-hand side. Here is Song Hyun Min, challenged and brought down by Idrissa Ganagay. Free kick to Tottenham, central position, level with the edge of that left-hand penalty area midway through. Yeah, just looking at that challenge, Son does very, very well. Just gets his body in front, just draws a foul in the play quick. They played it quickly to Perisic down to the left hand side, plays the ball across, and the header was a free one for Richarlison on the edge of the six yard box, and he heads it over. And the Everton fans will have enjoyed that. Their former man starting against them for the first time since leaving in the summer. But what a big chance for Richarlison inside yeah, the opening six. They switched off Perisic's wonderful ball. It was a difficult one, actually. It looked better until you see the replays. Sweet ball, it's curling away. The timing of his jump wasn't great. And he heads it over, it's a bit of a let off. He's got to hit the target. But yeah, just looking back, and it looks like they are going to set up with a back three, a back five as is for, for Everton. Tarkovsky being the right of the three centre backs. Obviously Coleman in it, right wing back. Cody, Kalenko, and then McNeil, which when a manager asks you to play somewhere, there'll be one player that wants to go the other way. <laughs> Up to the halfway line from Jordan Pickford, a chance perhaps for Everton to make some headway for the first time in this match inside the Tottenham half, but Tottenham deal with it calmly. And Lloris will play it out to the right-hand side and collected by Doherty. In fields to Eric Dyer now forward to Huibier, midway through his own half as Tottenham just go through the gears and accelerate over the halfway line. Here is Davis to the left of Perisic, down to the byline on that left-hand side, plays the ball in, it was just behind Richarlison who was turning, Everton get initial first contact, just the a gate, a couple of swings at it on the edge of the box, will help it on, but Tottenham have it back with Son, down the left-hand side, brilliant run by Son, into the penalty area, what was he tripped there? Referee says no, and Everton play the ball away Paul Tierney very definitive Tottenham now doing the free kick 25 yards out central position Richarlison going down VAR of course will have a look but Paul Tierney's initial response was nothing doing what about his run inside Coleman drives into the area that little arm just across his chest he goes down Coleman right on top of it saying get yourself up they will be looking at it if there's any contact he's going to such a quick speed and he managed to win a free kick. Coleman going tight, Tarkovsky coming, and Charleston rolling. It's a great range now from a free kick. Probably 25 yards out, just left of the centre. Son, Dyer got options. Pickford just trying to arrange that wall in front. But Everton have been nowhere near this game in the first eight minutes. Yeah, already they're holding on, Everton, because it has been all Tottenham. We have to say, with that penalty shout it was rather from the fans than from Son himself he pretty much got up straight away although he does often do that Son he's over the free kick now we've heard nothing from VAR and I think they're happy with Paul Tierney's on-field decision but still as Michael Brown says good opening this for Tottenham set piece 25 yards out just left of the D and Son Heung-min five goals in his last five games is standing over this nine minutes played Son looking to break the deadlock from this set piece for Tottenham against Everton. It's Son, it's right footed, it's straight into the wall. It's up towards halfway. And the South Koreans glance to the skies will tell you that that was Paul. Tottenham come forward again though, getting underway. Free kick goes against Harry Kane inside the penalty area. Just a little nudge there from James Tarkovsky to say, we know you're here, Harry Kane. 
and it's a free kick to Everton inside their own box. Nine minutes gone, nil-nil. It was a really good moment, wasn't it, between Tarkovsky and Cody. They'll be having a little bit of banter with Harry Kane, saying, stand up, don't foul us. But they just can't get close to them, Everton. Three in midfield. See Gray go and join more play, but they haven't really got hold of it. It's always difficult to, to go and play sort of a, a back five when you haven't had loads of time to work on it or you haven't done it often when you come into a place like this that are flying in the stadium. Jordan Pickford in possession for Everton, plays it up over halfway. Perisic will intercept with the header for Tottenham and Coleman will allow it to bounce out of play. I guess the one positive for Everton in, in that regard is that they have a player in Connor Cody that's very used to this system having played it at Wolves. I mean, the irony being that he left Wolves because Bruno Large felt he couldn't play in a four and then he's come to Everton and, and largely played in the four, but he will hope to marshal his back line for Everton as Everton win a set piece just inside the Tottenham half goal is here on five line. As we know, he's not afraid of an opinion, getting round his teammates. It'd be someone you'd want, wouldn't you, to, to help, to sort of galvanise, but... They just don't really seem to be fluid at the moment. It's gone a bit scrappy of the game. Free Paul Tini now starting to make lots of decisions, little ones, and finally Everton get a hold of the ball, move the ball around. They need to do it a little bit more, but the pressure's good from Spurs. And they're drawing a couple of fouls as well, Everton. That latest one, Doherty on Anana, over on the far side, and Everton in possession midway through their own half. Everton, who were on a seven-match unbeaten run in all competitions before defeat against Manchester United last time out. And have only won once on their last 13 league visits to Tottenham. The majority of those, of course, at White Hart Lane as the whistle goes. Tottenham have won a free kick. Everton are for testing, but Tottenham with Dyer down and the set-piece just inside their own half. A reminder, match of the day tonight on BBC One, 10.25 and two commentaries for you on Five Live on Premier League Sunday tomorrow. Leeds against Arsenal from 2 o'clock. Liverpool against Manchester City from 4.30. Just a stray arm, wasn't it? Neil Morpé, referee issues him a yellow card. He's had a lot of time to think about it and whether he's gained advice or, or, or from his team. He didn't really give it straight away you generally see the referee go over quickly and actually go there's your yellow card and the arm just did came across Dyer's face and he's up and he's ready and Spurs move the possession and again nil nil here on five live Eric Dyer in possession in the center circle out to Romero plays it forward to Harry Kane lays it off to the right and Richarlison hooks the ball into the penalty area first time comes all the way to Perisic and Perisic's header is straight into the arms of Jordan Pickford. Good combination, Kane, just that little set with Charleston that was a bit far away from him as he's going towards the byline, wraps his foot all around it, comes to the back post, poor header, Perisic, he could expect him to have better control, he's just nodded back towards Son. Everton in possession inside their own penalty area. Here is Coleman, again the press from Tottenham is good, it's won the ball back with Ben Tanker, lays it off to Son, under pressure, no free kick given this time and Everton will work it out to the right hand side and Alex Awobi. In field two, it was the Gunner Gay and then Damari Gray tumbles on the halfway line and Everton have another free kick. Yeah, Benton Kerr just going tight and Gray's asking for a bit more, just a little bit of a tangle. But again, Romero getting involved, Pickford coming all the way into the centre circle to have a word with the referee. Yeah, and Paul Tini here few, isn't he? yeah, has said, Let, let's not restart because I am going to have a word with Jordan Pickford and he's, he's gesturing with his right hand, Paul Tini, and it's very clear, he's gesturing to Gordon Pickford, you know, go back go back to your goal <laughs> because you're not the captain, Seamus Coleman is, and actually you don't need to run up to the halfway line to, to come and have a word with me. I'm perfectly capable of controlling this match myself. But Jordan Pickford's still not in his penalty area he's, he's midway got a bit, the he's got a half. bit of gel on there today hasn't he Jordan Pickford <laughs> slick right the way back I'm a better stick for that when I see you next time. I'd say the same about you Michael but well, it's not quite so much I'm hanging on to mine that's the difference <laughs> Tottenham in possession win the ball just outside their own penalty area blocked by Dwight McNeil over on the far side and it will be a goal kick to Tottenham he's going to have a 
busy afternoon, isn't he, McNeil? Racing down the left and then trying to get back as part of this defensive five for Everton. I think if you if you tell me now he's going to be racing down that front, you take it from the start they've had. He hasn't been anywhere near galloping forward for a touch, which you need to get. McNeil is lovely on the ball, very great to the eye. He can create things for his side. Good delivery, so he needs to get a little bit higher, but they've got to get better possession across the pitch to be able to release him into that. Good header one by Coleman to be Wobi as Tottenham for once can't play the ball out from the back. And Tarkovsky has it for Everton on the halfway line. Yes, Dwight McNeil ending that 57 game goal drought as well. A couple of games ago, getting his first goal for Everton. The winner two games ago against Southampton, but it was a real season of frustration for him at Burnley last campaign. No player had more shots in the Premier League last season without scoring than Dwight McNeil. Here is Connor Cody for Everton, who are enjoying their best spell of possession. 15 minutes in, nil-nil. Here on Five Live with Tottenham at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Here is McNeil on the left-hand side, laid off to Anana, who ranges forward towards the penalty area. The sliding challenge came in by Romero. The decision is called kick. Well, Anana is saying, how much there, Paul Tierney, did Christian Romero get of the ball? This looks like an unbelievable challenge. It's as good as you see. Just clips Anana and goes out for a goal kick. You don't often see a defender take that risk in that situation to wrap his foot back across. But all you have to do there, Anana, is move it slightly to the left and you win that penalty so comfortably. But it's a clean challenge. Very impressive from Romero as Tottenham comes down the right hand side here is Richarlison tries to play it off Mikalenko who goes down and does win the free kick Everton had one back possession anyway and it's a free kick to the visitors down by the corner flat nil nil yeah Tottenham 2 went down got tight it was an easy free kick I think it's one of those in the corner where the referee probably knows that there isn't much contact but he sort of has to give it and it's the most frustrating one on the pitch, it delays it for such a long period of time because there's not a lot in it, but you do see that. But finally, Everton, a couple of passes, some good runs there. Banana getting into the, the left-hand channel, that licence to go forward. And it's one of those as well where Everton had already come away with the ball, so <laughs> really you don't need to take it back. But they've sent it long, Jordan Pickford over the halfway line, here is Alex Iwobi. Plays it to Anana and now McNeil will go all the way back to Mikalenko and now Connor Cody. It's Alex Awobi takes up that position in the centre circle. Completely reinvented, isn't he? Under Frank Lampard as a central midfielder. Lampard saying, in fact, that he thinks Iwobi at the moment is one of the best central midfielders in the Premier League as Anana goes in on Romero. Advantage played. And here comes Richarlison midway through the Everton half. Ball got a deflection on the way through and won't bobble through to Son. And Everton in possession inside the rain penalty area. Yeah, he hesitated there with Charleston. There was space in front and then he just waited, got caught. But Everton are unsure how to play over the press. You see straight away the front three, Kane, Son, Richarlison pressing high. They've got the support in behind. Perisic going all the way. The front players have got to come off. They've got to find some space to be able to give the back three an option. 18 minutes gone, nil-nil. On an evening where Tottenham know a victory would take them to within a point of leaders Arsenal and level on points, although behind on goal difference, unless it was a remarkable Erling Haaland's goal scoring style victory. Level on points with Manchester City. They're in possession all the way back with Hugo Lloris. Son waiting on the halfway line. Do you think he's turned the corner in this season, Son? The hat trick off the bench against Leicester, a couple of goals against Eintracht Frankfurt in midweek one of them one of the best volleys you will ever see it's absolutely gorgeous the roof of the net almost taken off and I think it's brilliant me that he just does that and pipes a few people down because Son's incredible and yeah he could have a you know a couple of bad weeks and people are saying so so much things about him he's getting left out because of the pressure he's a great player he's got to play Tottenham in possession over on the far side, here's Romero as they just slow it down once again. Everton are organised with this back five. Iwobi just stepping out of central midfield there as Dyer sends it to the right and Romero once more looking for Richarlison. Won't quite break to Harry Kane in the penalty area. And the ball is all the way through with Jordan Pickford. Now, Dejan Kulisevsky on the Tottenham bench today. Antonio Conte saying that he might be back. 
after the midweek game against Manchester United. You'll be able to hear that on Wednesday, 8.15, commentary on Five Live. But as soon as Kulisevsky's back, then you've got that competition again, haven't you? With Charleston, Son, Kane, Kulisevsky. I mean, that's a frightening three, whichever you pick. Well, that is the problem, isn't it? And notably, that's why Son's affected. So as soon as he doesn't play, you've got a another. Then you can make that change. You can leave him out one or two, and that creates that sort of cycle which is not always healthy but yeah he's a big miss wonderful talent works really really hard i did the game internationally when he obviously hurt that hamstring and he's not in a, a good place but uh, you know they'll be looking forward to having him as another addition tottenham clear the ball away on the edge of their own penalty area intercepted by the head of patricia gay ben davis will use his own head and send that forward to in Tanker, a rumble of anticipation turns to a rumble of frustration from the home fans. It's just not quite clicking for Tottenham, and that's been the story of the season. Sometimes it clicks brilliantly, and sometimes what we know can work so well from an attacking sense just doesn't quite come together. It's hard to say, isn't it? You know, they control the possession so far, they've been good, they've got closer to the goal. Could they really? Be a little bit more creative, a little bit better at the top end of the pitch. It's hard to say that, but you feel like be, the manager will be pleased. And we'll always want that a little bit more, but it's been a good start from Spurs. Here comes Perisic down the left-hand side, looking for the run made by Davis. Now Perisic once more switches the play to Romero out on the right-hand side. Everton with everybody back playing in the traditional home kit, the royal blue shirts, the white shorts. And the royal blue socks, Tottenham with the white shirts, the dark shorts and the white socks playing from right to left in this first half, which we are almost midway through here on Five Live, goalless at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Here is Eric Dara in possession on the halfway line. Michael Brown. I, know, I know I keep saying this, but do you know when you come to this stadium, anybody listening who's not been has got to visit. Harry Kane drives the shot in, deflected behind Tottenham corner. Brilliant from Kane, as soon as he gets that room, half turn, gets his shot away, goes to try and curl it, a good block, but he just finds that space at the right time, he points, wants it, great first touch, second one, just out of his feet, very quick with his chance. They've taken the corner short again, Ben Tankour will whip it in, cleared away by Everton, only as far as Doherty, midway through the Everton half, here is Ben Tankour, out to Son, on the left hand side, nil nil on five lives, Son with a couple of step overs whips the ball in, cleared away by Everton only as far as Perisic, it won't be out there with him, Perisic left hand side of the box will pull it back to Doherty midway through the Everton half Mope slips as he closes him down so he's have to be careful not to lose position here because Everton have committed three players forward but they play around that well it's good composure there but now they've lost it and Everton can pick it up just outside their own penalty area and play it forward looking for the run of Damare Gray, and he's got past Benton Kerr into the penalty area. Gray fires over, Maurice did well to make the angle as big as possible. And it's high and over the bar, but that's a decent opening for Everton. Gray does really, really well. He uses his body. Benton Kerr's got his favourite, but he gets his body in between. One long pass, and then his touch is great. Gets into the area, poor defending Benton Kerr. And he squares Larissa up, puts it sky high over the bar. He should do better. Here comes Perisic for Tottenham in field to Benton Kerr, closed down by Gray. The fans shouted. Benton Kerr was just pressured there without realising, and Everton have won the ball back. Intercepted well by Perisic. Down the left hand side, appeals for the throw, gets it as well. Looking to get things underway quickly. Bypasses Harry Kane, looking for Richarlison. Cleared away by Everton once more. Perisic controls with his head. And Davis will send it all the way back to Eric Dyer. 23 minutes gone, still Tottenham nil, Everton nil. It's so comfortable, but there's that shows you, doesn't it, when you've got pace at the top of the pitch, great as well. Pensica uh, has got to realise, just get goal side, you can't win it early. Spurs back with that composed passing, moving it from side to side, drawing Everton out. Sort of seems to have a, a pattern now, don't they? Conte's got that understanding and that rhythm. They know their distances, they know when to, to drop back down. Perisic has ball into the penalty area, headed away by Mikulenko and cleared by McNeil before Richarlison can latch onto it. Tottenham will pick it up once more with Hoybier out on the right-hand side. Nil-nil, 
plays it forward looking for Harry Kane on his 400th appearance. Lead away by James Tarkovsky and Tottenham have it once more on half way. Ricky, I thought you were going to go with that earlier. We've waited <laughs> 24 minutes for Harry Kane. I'm looking at and thinking, you've got to get that in, you know. <laughs> I was waiting for him to stick one in the top I corner, know, and I, I might say it again if he does. What a remarkable, remarkable career he has had and is having here. As Ben Davis plays it in left footer towards the penalty area, comes out to Huibier, urged to shoot, does so. It's high and it's wide. Well, it wasn't great, was it? You can hear all the stadium. I've been in the in front of these supporters when they say shoot. I've done similar things before anyone says it. He screwed it wide. It was sort of a, a good first touch and then he sort of rushed it. Just looking back at that grey chance and it goes so high, he sort of gets right under it. Sort of like a, a sand wedge rather than just hitting it straight at the goalkeeper, seeing where it goes. Anywhere near his feet, you've got a chance. Well, he has scored twice already, Pierre-Emil Huibier this season, just one off his entire total for last season. No goals so far here on Five Live, with 25 minutes played in the first half. Charleston dispossessed on the halfway line and Everton will play it back to Gay and now Mikalenko pulls it back to Connor Cody. And now square to Tarkovsky. We talk about Everton's players that they're missing defensively but having Tarkovsky and Cody regularly playing as Everton win a throw on the halfway line is such a benefit for them. Yeah, it's a big benefit you know Michael Keane's gained an experience as well he's on the bench but you feel squad wise and uh, they're getting a little bit stronger they've actually wasted so much money for many many seasons and we've got to come out with it and have a successful season speaking to people just before the game of they don't want to get to the end of the season in that mess and hanging on for the lives again this season and they've showed some promise. I think I felt like they were still going to have a little bit of a struggled season, but they've started quite well considering. They're in position now, nil-nil. With Tottenham here on Five Live, midway through their own half. Yes, Michael Keane on the bench again today, really struggling to get in the side at the moment. And, and notable as well that with the switch to the back three, it's Mikolenko who's preferred is that left centre back rather than putting Keane in but it does give them the flexibility doesn't it to put Mikalenko as a left back exactly they you can, can change, change formation at any in point, game it's so yeah. comfortably um, it's natural um, so you can see why they've done it but we find the same Everton just groaning confidence sneaking up Dwight McNeil going high up the, on the line now he's driving inside in a higher position so they're giving Spurs something to think about now but it's took circa 25 minutes that one run and they're getting a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, we're seeing it almost switch into a fall there, but Idrissa Ganagay is almost dropping back into a pseudo centre-half role. Here is Dwight McNeil down the left-hand side, dispossessed. And Tottenham will clear away. And Mikalenko will pick it up. But after a dominant start by Tottenham, Everton barely able to get a touch in the opening five minutes. They have just settled now, Everton, and they're able to employ that flexibility with formation just a little bit more. Here is Idrissa Garnagay just inside the Tottenham half. You have to say, I think patience is the word for both sides, isn't it, really, when they're in possession? You've got to try and grow in and stretch people and understand where the spaces are. Now they're trying to find those spaces. Idrissa Garnagay wins the free kick. 30 yards or so out. Just level with that left-hand side of the penalty area. And they've drawn those sort of set pieces as well in the last 20 minutes yeah, or just so. Just again, again, getting further forward, controlling, getting more touches, Vicky. And you can see when he goes quickly, it's hard to touch him. And as soon as he tries to chop it late, Romero comes in, just that little bit of a foul. But now, technicians involved, who's got that quality? People attacking the back post, Sarkowski's thinking, put it right in there. It's a really, really high line from Spurs. Everybody in a straight line together. A Wobi Tarkovsky just trying to sneak. Will Everton move it just to try and beat that sort of offside position from Spurs' point of view? Yep, they're all lined up level with the edge of the D, the white shirts. The ball is now played in. Romero wins the header, doesn't quite get the distance. We'll come to Anana. He leaves it for Coleman. Deflection will take it behind. And it will be an Everton corner. When you talk about Son, top of the pitch, what he gives you. That overload came round the box. And then as Everton try to play it, second phase, there's a poor header, Sun tries to take his touch. 
And just as the line up for a shot, Coleman comes on. It's a brilliant block by Son. Divert it over for an Everton corner. Corner to be taken from this near side as we approach the half hour mark on five live. Tamari Gray making his way into the six yard box. Dwight McNeil will take this for Everton. Swung in high to the far post and the head of his back across goal and over. It was a decent opening for James Tarkovsky and he grimaces, rubs his cheeks with his hands as he makes his way out of the penalty area. Yeah, there's a little bit of pushing. Romero back post, James Tarkovsky just gets his header away but couldn't guide it towards the goal. You see the difference straight away. Everton get that one run, that one chance. So much more confident. Tottenham nil, Everton nil here on Five Live. Leeds against Arsenal, Liverpool against Manchester City are commentaries for you on Five Live tomorrow and on Five Sports Extra this evening. Join us for the big fight at the O2. Clarissa Shields against Savannah Marshall. Commentary starts at 7.30. Steve Crossman could have a, a run out. Can he cross the northwest for that one, I would imagine, tomorrow? I might be wrong. Tottenham in possession, taking the ball to the edge of the penalty area. Here is Perisic, feeds Harry Kane, falls wide. Kane tricking his way to the six yard box. Very good block by Pickford. Richarlison can't latch onto it. And Dwight McNeil will clear away for Everton. Yeah, brilliant skill as Harry Kane gets into the, the penalty area. It looks like he's got nowhere to go. It's a late check, a little sort of nutmeg. Just tries to get away. Pickford diving to his feet. Shows you straight away. I, mean, so I don't think Kane's anywhere near it. You can just create anything from nothing. Good chance. Always dangerous, ever threatening in the penalty area. Harry Kane looking to mark that 400th appearance for Tottenham with a goal. So far, no goals for either side here on Five Live. The Sun swings the ball in. Very good delivery, cleared away by Everton. Met by Romero fires over from 20 yards. It's a br brilliant delivery again from this left-hand side. Good defending. Tarkovsky in the sort of centre of the six-yard area. And then the shot comes in from Romero. It's sort of sat up, hesitated. Let's put it really, really high with no real power. Antonio Conte paces to the edge of his technical area as Jordan Pickford prepares to take this goal kick for Everton. Conte, who has never lost against Everton as a manager, this is eighth meeting with them. He's never even seen a side of his conceded goal against Everton in the Premier League as Pickford comes up very quickly to the edge of his area, closed down by Son and clears over the halfway line. Here is Gay, field to Onana, forward to Mope, well challenged by Romero will be picked up by Benton Cora. Out to the right-hand side, looking for Doherty. Heads it back to Richarlison, who turns away. And Lana slips. Richarlison still going. Benton Kerr, Puybier, excellent block by Mikolenko. Over on that left-hand side for Everton, but Tottenham retain possession. Nil-nil, 33 minutes gone. Here is Tottenham's number 33, Ben Davis, out to the left-hand side now. And Perisic has Son in front of him. Perisic swings the ball into the area, right-footed, bodies at the far post. The header was met by Doherty on the angle, straight into the arms of Pickford, who gets things moving quickly. And Tottenham are trying to race the white shirts back as Everton over the halfway line with Dwight McNeil goes down. Continue says there's nothing in that. Christian Romero agrees and Huivier can bring it forward. And for the first time, 33 minutes in, the game just starting to open up a little bit, but just too much on that from Harry Kane for Richarlison. And Pickford again will gather. Brilliant from Romero. He starts the Tottenham attack, playing the ball forward after driving into the space. His recovery run, excellent. Seen Dwight McNeil finally get that run. Romero's was better, nick the ball, that bit of strength, the arm across him to win the ball back. Everton in possession over the top from Jessica Gay, looking for Tamari Gray, who's taken up the central position, but it's all the way through to Hugo Lloris. And you look down at that Everton team sheet and you see Dominic Calvert-Lewin still not risked from the start. He's had so many issues with injury over the last year or so. They don't want to bring him back and have him drop out again by rushing him too much. But he is still a big miss 
for Everton. Mope arriving in the summer from Brighton. Just the one goal so far, the winner against West Ham. Goals, something that Everton need to find. Nil-nil here against Tottenham as Perisic picks it up left-hand side, plays it towards the penalty area, well blocked by Seamus Coleman, who does a 360 and plays it out to Alex Awobi. Smattering a booze for the former Arsenal man from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as Adressa Gunn again picks it up and plays it out to the left-hand side in field now to Onana. And Iwobi just taking up that position outside the central circle. Frank Lampard we touched on earlier, Michael, one of the best central midfielders Iwobi in the Premier League at the moment, would you agree? Um, he's done very well, hasn't he? Obviously creating opportunities very high in Everton's ranks getting forward where he can he's obviously not got any of that joy today but it's nice to see an improvement but you sort of sort of said you you asked me the question whether Frank Lampard it was sort of it's difficult to even say isn't it for a Wobi but yeah much improved he needs his team to improve and he's going to show better performances and so it's great to have some praise isn't it absolutely I'll always take it Son on the halfway line. Here is Ben Davis, nil-nil between Tottenham and Everton. Ten minutes to go until half-time on five line. It's a position central midfielder and Iwobi has played before. And Frank Lampard saying that he recognised in Iwobi's game things that he wouldn't have wanted to play against in central midfield. And that is the benefit of huge, huge experience, of course, from Lampard as a player. Played forward by Jessica Garner Gay. Everton lose possession, but they won the free kick. Benton Kirpinovic. I think it was the way he put his, his sort of his hand up straight away, Gray. Whether he's hurt his ankle, or there was a little bit of a tackle where sometimes hit ball and ankle. Trying to see the replay back again, but he looked uncomfortable. Whether it's just jarred away, and the player lays down and falls, he's trying to see the clip. It might be on the ankle bone, Vicky, from um, from Benton Kerr. The referee looked at it, waited. There he is, seeing another yellow card. Yeah, he has taken his time, and I mean that in a positive way, actually, with, with Paul Tierney. The two yellow cards we've seen, one for Mope and one for Benton Kerr. He's looked at the challenge, he's given the decision very quickly, but he's just allowed himself to have that thinking time. Is that worth a yellow? And then he's made the decision. It's almost, and I shouldn't say this, as if somebody's watched it back and told him. Do you know, surely, I mean, I'm not saying that's happened, but on the two occasions, He's waited such a long period of time that he wasn't going to maybe act. And are we giving him full credit for that? To understanding, to think about the situation? I mean, maybe he's just a very reflective type of guy. I don't know. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure he is. Now, as a team of officials, you need everybody to make the right decision. And that's what we're here for, to get the right decisions. And obviously me joking around there. If these, these officials, between all of them, get the right decisions on the football pitch, then we're, we're all happy. Absolutely. So... Free kick to Everton. Seven and a half minutes to go until half time. And given that Tottenham have won their last seven Premier League home games in a row here, I think Everton will be pleased so far with how the switch to five at the back has largely kept Tottenham at bay. Pickford's had a couple of saves to make, but largely they've managed to restrict Tottenham to half chances or combination moves to Tottenham that haven't quite come off from a Tottenham perspective as Benton Kerr is challenged there what a tackle that is if he's won that clean it's an incredible tackle great ball through the line, Son just sets it off Benton Kerr gets racing and Nana all the way back outside of his foot to win it what a tackle certainly what Paul Tierney thinks as we play on Everton in possession I might have heard the Tottenham fans disagree but they would do, wouldn't they? Of course, all fans will be behind their team in those sort of scenarios. Here we are, Everton, knocking the ball around between this back three. Connor Cody will send it all the way back to Jordan Pickford, close down to his England teammate Harry Kane, and Tarkovsky will clear up towards halfway where Damari Gray waits. Lovely little flick of the boot to flick the ball over his head but can only flick it out of play over Ben Davis and Tottenham have the throw nil nil yeah, Ben Davis goes really really tight just seeing it back now let's hope we're right outside of his left foot spot on there was a little bit of a player at the end of it but there's an art to tackle him we've seen Romero 
now we've seen Inanna do it and you don't often see it in these games because they don't take the risk to do it because of VAR. Here comes Tottenham winning it back with Richarlison who goes down. Routinely happy with that as well. I don't think he'll be happy. Oh, he is happy with that. Tottenham have won it back. Richarlison, 30 yards out, shoots, deflection, Tottenham corner. Yeah, you can hear the stadium lift now. Richarlison gets into space, drives it. So with his left foot, Tarkovsky coming across to the referee to do something about his elbow, which tells to me it's definitely hit him around that spot. How are we going to see a decision made? I'm not so sure. It's probably close to his body. Yeah, but Charleston appealed for it. The referee is just making sure that there's nothing on the wall going on in the six-yard box. Son has placed the ball down. So VAR, of course, will, will have a little check. But Charleston was the one that appealed, but he gave up on the appeals pretty quickly, it has to be said, as Tottenham waits to take this corner. Pickford, Romero, Cody, all in very close quarters. You know exactly what they're doing. They're right on the goalkeeper, putting him off, trying to get across him. I'm going to put it on there. Very congested six-yard box indeed. Son with the corner for Tottenham. That's where it goes into. Pickford gets something on it. And the overhead clearance from Dwight McNeil will send it all the way up to Doherty. Just outside the centre circle. Plays it back in. Seamus Coleman with the header just to the edge of his own penalty area. Comes back into Son. Cleared away by Everton once more. And Connor Cody. Perisic will try and bring it down. Get a one well by Coleman. Perisic goes down. Stays down. Coleman has a few words with him as Everton play it out. Now, Fultini stopped play because Perisic is down holding his head. Didn't make any decision in terms of any foul there on Perisic, so Everton were in possession, but we've stopped play so that Fultini can make sure that Perisic is OK. Very, very aggressive from Coleman. As if to say, you're coming in me, into me, leaning, that's what you're going to get. You deserve yourself right as you raise your arm. And it was sort of the side of Coleman's sort of shoulder bicep that hits him on the head so i don't feel like there's going to be a you know a huge danger or and any sort of problem to his head because of the part of the body that hit him i think if it was elbow or his head because initially i thought it was a clash of heads but coleman's gone you come into me that's what you're going to get you deserve it but referee not best pleased with the situation he's calling a few people over yeah he wins the header very cleanly coleman but the jump takes his shoulder as Michael Brown says into Perisic who is up no harm done and we get play underway with the drop ball and Everson sends it up over halfway on miscue by Hoybier and Anana could be in here bearing down on goal Anana for Everton fires just over it was good defending in the end by Dyer who slid in just did enough to put him off but again if you look at the openings that Everton have had in this match there's been some decent ones. Yeah, it's Benson Kerr, strange header. Romero, Hoybier come close. Nobody took charge. Anana drive right through the centre. He had that gap that Romero had left. And he's just in front of Lloris. Dyer diving desperately. The reverse arm comes over from Lloris. And it just goes over the bar. Huge chance for Everton. It's one of those that if it's on target, I don't know if Lloris is getting well, there. The, the, the arm comes across as he stays big. He waits. And he just drives it sort of the reserve, reverse sort of left hand over his head. And it just rises over the bar. He's got to hit the target. But he'd run such a long way from the halfway line. But just that lack of concentration, decision making from Spurs. Romero, Hoiberg let him through. Perisic in position for Tottenham, switches the play out to the right hand side and Doherty and Romero's joined the attack which gives Tottenham a body over. Doherty goes in field instead and that will go out right. Oh, McNeil's dived in there. He's cleaned him out and that was a winger's challenge rather than a wing back's challenge from Dwight McNeil and he's into the book and Tottenham have a set piece. Good position this level with the right hand side of the penalty area. The ball gets swept across. Good, good switch of play. Doherty gets it. But they're asking him, the supporters, to play forward a 30-yard, sort of 25-yard pass with his side foot into space. He loses it, they're in trouble. He can't make that pass, and there's booze all around. Sometimes he can't win the supporters over, and he hasn't really done that, has he? Uh, and then he drives forward with confidence, draws the foul in, does really, really well, and so he made the right decision. Well, it's only his second Premier League start of the season, Matt Doherty. That's because Emerson is suspended. But he has won the set piece, and here is Son over it once more for Tottenham. Into the final minute of normal time at the end of the first half, nil-nil. 
Tottenham looking for the late breakthrough against Everton. Son with the delivery. Header is over by Anana in the end. It will be a corner to Tottenham. It's a great ball. Actually, a little bit deeper. Everton. Son puts it right in the centre of the six yard area. Richarlison diving through. You see everybody getting tight. Anana actually hits his shoulder and goes over. So Tottenham corner. Son over it once more. Again, a very congested six-yard box. Son in from the left, swings it into that six-yard box. The header was won by Dyer. Everton just about get it away out of the penalty area. Tottenham will come again. Good fit in by Iwobi, and it gets the touch of Perisic as well. And it will be an Everton Four throw finishes. midway through their own half as we enter two minutes of added time. Nil-nil between Tottenham and Everton on five lines. Pickford just come forward and you know as a goalkeeper he probably thinks oh no I'm not getting there but I've already gone tries to get a touch on it he's shouting at the assistant referee down to his left hand side and say give him some protection but it's been a great first half we haven't seen an opening but we've seen incident we've seen some good play obviously Spurs dominating early but Everton have certainly contributed and had those chances and, and sort of grown in confidence into towards the end of this first half yeah, it's been an intriguing tactical battle as well, hasn't it? The switch by Lampard to the back five has posed a problem that Tottenham so far have not been able to solve. They're coming forward, nice little drag back by Son to Harry Kane, plays it in left foot, looking for Richarlison, who met it on the volley, eight yards out, steed it over. And he had company as well with Mikolenko there, defending for Everton, and that was just enough to put his former teammate off. It was great play. Davies into Son, that little Croy flick set. Kane getting into space, fizzes it right across the face. Richarlison has no right to get anywhere near it. Sh shows his strength. Mikolenko does well. He would have given a foul. Gets his touch over the bar, but Pickford under a lot of pressure. He's probably just killing off these last few moments of the first half as he just strikes it really, really high towards Anana. Yes, 20 seconds of added time to play, nil-nil. And Everton in possession, Pickford just taking his time over that. Everton looking to see this one out. And Jordan Pickford's getting the booze for just delaying that goal kick earlier. Here is Richarlison, steals it away from Dwight McNeil. Out on the right-hand side, McNeil's still with him and there's no time for Richarlison to drive down the left-hand side. He will aim for goal as the whistle goes and that misses as well and at half time it is nil nil between Tottenham and Everton Michael Brown yeah no I'm not so sure why uh, I hear the frustration from the Spurs supporters I think they've done well they set a good tone early on controlling it creating opportunities some good movement yes Everton have had opportunities one long direct ball and then that little bit of a misunderstanding but overall they've done quite well so full credit to both sides it's been a a real interesting first half that you looked like it was going to be out of reach for Everton. Spurs were that comfortable, but they've come back into it. Pickford just having that little sort of argument now as he walks off the pitch with the referee. Obviously wants a bit of protection in front of him, but obviously something to think about for both managers. So half time at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on a night where Tottenham know if they win, they'll go a point behind leaders Arsenal and level on points with Manchester City. At the moment, though, we're all square, nil-nil. Yeah, I agree, Michael. The boos are a little bit much. I mean, it's been better than Wolves Forest. <laughs> exactly, Steve. I'm just, honestly, they, they controlled it so much early on. They played in the week. It was a good start. They, they showed, you know, they showed that they, they didn't just want to sit back in that five. They were really high and wide, some great forward runs. As I mentioned, Benson Kerr, front three pressing. But obviously, they haven't scored. But if this happens is the Premier League Everton have come in and banked with that back five that we probably didn't expect with McNeil going on that left wing back position and they had their couple of opportunities but it was an interesting first half in a Premier League game with a high standard we just need some goals 
Uh, Michael, Vicky, thank you very much for the time being. Speaking of uh, Wolves Forest, there is a, a slightly odd social media picture game going on between the uh, two clubs' social media accounts at the minute. All you really need to know is that Wolves beat Forest by a goal to nil. Ruben Neves' penalty taking them out of the bottom three. Forest are bottom of the Premier League. Fulham and Bournemouth drew two all, so that's six unbeaten for Gary O'Neill in interim charge. They actually would have gone into the top six had they held on for victory, but Mitrovic scored a controversial penalty and it finished Leicester nil, Crystal Palace nil. So Leicester moving off the bottom of the table in the Championship. Burnley are top. They beat Swansea by four goals to nil. I've actually just been speaking to their manager, Vincent Company, so we'll hear from him shortly. Uh, game of the day, Sheffield United 3, Blackpool 3. Uh, the Blades were 2-0 up, then 3-2 down. Then Blackpool had two players sent off and Sheffield United equalised in the 98th minute. And then another player was sent off for each team after the final whistle. Much more straightforward for Celtic in Scotland. They beat Hibs 6-1. They are five points clear at the top. They've played one game more than Rangers, who play on Sunday. Away from the football, uh, England thrashing Samoa 66. The hosts winning in the opening game of the Rugby League World Cup. In the Rugby Union Women's World Cup, Australia came back from 12-0 down at halftime to beat Scotland 14-12. Uh, in Pool B, USA beat Japan 30-17. And England are through to the quarterfinals after a 13-7 win over France. Racing, Baid's career, an unbeaten run ended with defeat in the champion stakes at Ascot. Europe's top horse denied an 11th successive win by Bay Bridge on Champions Day. And in boxing from 10 o'clock tonight on Five Live Sport and BBC Sounds with commentary of Savannah Marshall's fight with her longtime rival, the American Clarissa Shields, to become the undisputed middleweight champion. All the build-up and the undercard ahead of the fight at the O2 begins on Sports Extra from half past seven. We will have all of the reaction to today's Premier League matches and that interview with Vincent company after the news with Jill McKenzie. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Mason Greenwood has been charged with attempted rape, controlling and coercive behaviour and assault. All the offences relate to the same woman. The Manchester United striker was arrested in January. He's due before magistrates on Monday. The new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, has indicated a major shift of economic policy on his first full day in the job after taking over from Kwasi Kwarteng. Mr Hunt says difficult decisions lie ahead, including on public spending cuts. The Governor of the Bank of England is warning interest rates might need to rise by more than previously thought. Andrew Bailey says the bank won't hesitate to raise rates to meet the inflation target, adding that might now need a stronger response. And President Erdogan says 41 people have died in a blast at a coal mine in northern Turkey and everyone is now accounted for. The explosion is being treated as an accident and is believed to have been caused by methane. The best life sports. Moves in bold. That's edge! A call! Stops and he makes some roll and he's got hard and high and over the boundary and it's a six. Difficult twirling catch. Sixteen of the world's biggest teams head down under to compete for the ICC Men's T20 World Cup. This is just thrilling. Chaos. This is going for six. All Bible coverage of every match starts Sunday on Five Sports Extra and the BBC Sounds app. This is Five Live Sport with Steve Crossman. Nil at half time. Second half commentary on the way. Earlier, Wolves beat Forest 1 0 thanks to a Ruben Neves penalty. Let's hear from the Wolves interim manager, Steve Davis. I think it's a step forward. There's still a lot of work to do, but I think getting that result, you know, after a difficult period is, is vital because it changes confidence, you know, it changes people's perceptions of us because we know we have the talent, we know we have the potential in the group. And, you know, today we saw good signs of that, I thought, in the, in the game. I thought for 70 minutes we dominated the game. The last 20 minutes we hung on a little bit, but uh, that's the nature of football sometimes. When, when you do go ahead, you get a little bit nervous, and I think we, we did get a bit nervous today. Can I also ask, as a man, or indeed a boy, that used to stand on the terraces here, yes. what did that victory mean to you today? <laughs> Just a cheer, probably, where the fans felt about it, you know, a bit of relief but obviously jubilation and, and being able to enjoy a pint tonight and chatting to my mates that also went to the game and picking the bones out of the game, the good bits and the bad bits. Steve Davis with Gary Flintoff. Wolves climb out of the relegation zone. Forest are bottom. Here's Steve Cooper. Well, we're obviously disappointed with, this, with the result. The performance, I thought, without the ball first half was good. 
Um, but I didn't like this one bit with the ball first half. We we turned it over on transition too much, and when we had an opportunity to play, you know, we didn't show enough bravery and responsibility in in trying to get our own momentum. So. Um, so I will, you know, we'll, we'll look at that. The message half time was what I just said to you. Really, was keep going with the defending and and improve with the ball. And uh, unfortunately, it took us a penalty against and go one 0 down to to see an improvement with with the ball. And um, and we did. And you know, we we got into some good areas. But uh, and, you know, we've ended up sort of forcing the game really with all the changes that we made, trying to get attacking players on 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 the pitch. So um, you've got to make your own luck. I understand that. I do things one or two things went against us, but we've got to play better with the ball than what we did first half. Fulham came from behind twice to draw two all with Bournemouth. In sports report earlier, we heard from the Bournemouth interim manager Gary O'Neill. He said he was really unhappy with the penalty awarded to Alexander Mitrovic, which made it two all. Here's the Fulham manager, Marco Silva. I have seen if last season is penalty for West Ham. Why this not penalty this afternoon? This is consistency, you know. Um, everyone saw what happened last week against our game against West Ham. I think everyone saw it. We we lost the game, three goals, and the feedback that I got from the the referee, from the in charge of the, of the referees, that is clear penalty from to West Ham. If that one is penalty, that, this one should be penalty as well because I have to see some consistency for for all the teams. So you're saying you don't necessarily think that was a penalty today, but judged on what you saw last week, they have to give. No, no, it. I'm saying that if that one is penalty, this one is to be penalty. And next week has to be penalty if something happen again. That's Marco Silva. In the lunchtime game in the Premier League, Leicester stay in the relegation zone after a goalless draw with Crystal Palace. They've only won one of their opening 10 games in the league this season. Here's Brendan Rodgers. Well, I think the standards we've set since we've been in here, you know, a two fifth place finishes and an eighth for a club like ourselves was, uh, was a great standard that we've set. We were unable to improve our, our position in the market to allow us to improve further. So we just have to knuckle down with what we've got. I, I totally respect the supporters. If you're any team at the bottom of the league, then of course uh, you're always going to have your critics. You'll have them when you're at the top of the league. There'll always be critics, but I think certainly uh, when you're suffering like we've been in, in this early part of the season, then um, then of course there's always going to be that. But for me, my dedication is with the players and for the club that we stay strong and that uh, you've seen the players fighting and running and working today and uh, and gradually over the season I believe we'll be able to uh, pull ourselves away from it but naturally when you don't start well there's always going to be questions asked and it's my responsibility and, and I accept that. And just to add to his woes, James Madison will miss Leicester's next Premier League game with Leeds United after he picked up a fifth yellow card of the season and that was for a dive late in the game. In the Championship, Burnley beat Swansea 4-0 to go top. A few moments ago, I spoke to their manager, Vincent Company, and asked him how it feels. Top of the league is not something that we think about. Um, the win was good, the, the performance was good and um, so much energy in the team, so that's a good thing to see. Do you really not think about being top of the league? Because I know all managers say that, but it must be nice. Um, no, I, <laughs> I, I have the advantage that um, luckily in my career I've, I've, I've seen it a little bit and, and the best thing is not to think about it. You take it game by game. It's a good performance now and, um, and you know, we don't want to get onto like a, a championship emotional roller coaster. Just, just crack on and, and try and win the next game. That is a really interesting point that that hadn't occurred to me because you spent so long in your playing career right at the top. Yeah, it's easier to stay level as a manager. Yeah, but 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 I do I do think that and we'll see. You know, in the end, it's still a, a young group coming together. There's still so much unpredictable in the in the championship. But from experience, all I know is that you. You know, you, you focus on, on habits, you focus on the work you have to do, prepare, preparing the game in the right way, bringing your standards up and, and keeping your standards up. You don't really focus too much on what's around you and, and, and it's you, you know, you, you, you're against yourself. And so we want to keep the standards high and therefore it's irrelevant whether we're first or second or third or fourth or even if we had a dip, you, um, you keep improving and, and, and that's what brings consistency. I'm sure that because you are you, there will have been so much focus on you and not so much focus on your players. So what has pleased you most about working with them this season? Well, as long as as, as coaches, we focus on the players, then it's all right. Yeah. I mean, these guys, are, these guys have been, um, I think relentless is the best way to describe it. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things you could have expected you know coming into this job but one thing that that was really pleasing for us coaches and you know they give 200 percent every single day of the week and we got the focus we got their attention 
you know, it's it's not always that it has to be fantastic, but we know we can progress because the guys are just staying, you know, so dedicated to anything we do, and and that has to stay. I mean, those are the habits we really pay attention to. Well, one of the things that people always say about teams that have been relegated from the Premier League is even when you sign quite a few players and quite a few players leave, it's sort of difficult to get the feeling of relegation almost out of the out of the walls, out of the, the soul of the club. So how have you managed to do that so quickly? <laughs> it's quite easy. We, we've got 16 new players in the building. And I think for us, the, the risk was was not so much the feeling of relegation because you know most of us really didn't experience it. I think the hardest part for us was to create a new team, you know, a squad that that runs together, fights together, and 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 plays in a way that you know suits them best and, and can bring them success. And that, that's the most difficult part. And as well with the 16 new players we had to bring in, there was a whole big thing about debt repayment, and so it was really not that easy at the start. And uh, and seeing this becoming a team and a squad, um, that is more important than even the points we've got at the moment. So we know we can carry on and hopefully uh, beyond this season. Uh, that is the Burnley manager, Vincent Company, who also said when he looked for players this season, he said, if you're a superstar, we don't want you at Burnley and managing at the top is not rocket science. Well, he's certainly making it look simple at the minute. Burnley, top of the table. 08085 909 693. I am sure Burnley fans, you will want to be on 606 once we're done at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium with Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage. Thank you so much, Steve. It must have been rocket science for Chris when he was managing Lincoln then, Chris. Hey, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Hey, what uh, I was at, I was at Leicester today. Just worry Chris, about your you know, own club, Rob. Yeah, won again today, top of the league, Chris. Don't worry about that. Um, mm, I was out, at Leicester. out of all the cups, but go on. I was out less. I was at Leicester today, nil nil. They had, Leicester were the better side, a clean sheet. That's a positive. But um, you know, one or two people said there was booze at the end. Personally, I didn't hear them. Thoughts. Did, mm, um, well, let's hear from from Leicester fans. Are they, it's simple, isn't it, from a Leicester fan's point of view? Are they backing Brendan Rodgers, or do they want to see a new face? Uh, yeah, obviously, I, I've not seen much of the action today, Chris. You, you were on a TV show. What game did you watch, and what do you want to talk about? Uh, I watched Celtic today, Rob, who, who bounced back uh, after the uh, disappointing result in Europe. But interesting, want to hear from Bournemouth fans. Gary O'Neill, mm. um, I mean, what's that, six now, unbeaten under him? Why hasn't he been given the job already, Rob? I don't I don't really get that one. And what the big, big win for Wolves, but what about Nottingham Forest? Uh, yeah, well, I want to hear from Wolves fans because um, Steve Davis in charge today, maybe uh, hearing from one of the production uh, crew that uh, that Steve Cooper said that, uh, that, that Sarr had come off his line with a penalty and, you know, that should have been retaken. So let's hear from Forest fans about that. There'll be a frustration. Steve Davis may be getting a big break with that one, Rob. Um, but Wolves fans, that went straight over your head, didn't it? Wolves fans, do <laughs> no, you want it, Nuno it, it. back? I mean, there, there's believed to be talks with Nuno, Espirito Santo. Do they want him back, mm. Wolves? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. 08, 08, 5, 909, 693 back over to Michael Brown, who's with Vicky Sparks. Thanks very much, Robbie. The players entering the field for the second half here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Nil, nil at half time. Tottenham in their home kit, of course. The white shirts, the dark shorts and the white socks. Everton in their home kit as well. The royal blue shirts, the white shorts and the blue socks. It's Jordan Pickford with his towel in his orange gloved hand, races towards his six yard box and raises a hand of acknowledgement to the fans behind the goal. He's, he's never afraid to mix it, is he, Jordan Pig? But he, he loves that sort of antagonism and the free song that you get between supporters and fans. Sometimes it brings out the absolute best of him. Sometimes he does get a bit carried away with it. He's just having a little warm up behind the goal and we're off and yeah, he loves all of it, doesn't he? He wants to get involved, but notably he'll want to get right on form, ready for, for next month, that's a certainty. So off and underway in the second half. Both sides still looking for the breakthrough. No changes at half time, and we will take you through the lineups in a moment. So Son races down this left hand side. Excellent sliding challenge by James Tarkovsky coming in, and Tottenham have a throw over on the far side as Antonio Conte paces his technical area. He's actually out of his technical area, already barking instructions as Tottenham send the throw into the penalty area. Everton win the free kick as they clear. Neil Mope going down 
and they have a set piece just outside their own penalty area. If you were Conte Michael Brown, what would you have said to your charges at half time? I just think it's a, it's that little bit of composure in the right areas. We've seen some great deliveries. Keep doing what you're doing. Be careful we don't get countered. And so can we just get it into feet a little bit more? Richarlison, Kane on that half turn, Son in those areas. I think in those sort of positions in behind, obviously. Dwight McNeil would be one area that would be pushing into that back corner. So, Tottenham in possession inside their own penalty area with Lloris in goal. The back three of Romero, Dyer, and Davis. Ahead of them, it's Doherty, Benton Kerr, Puivier, and Perisic with Richarlison facing Everton for the first time since that big money move in the summer. Son Hyun Min and Harry Kane up front. Here are Tottenham in possession with Doherty just in front of his manager Antonio Conte and that's interesting Conte is clapping his hands together he's gesturing with his arms more intensity would appear to be the message as Tottenham bring it down the left hand side ball scoops into the penalty area good header away by Dwight McNeil because Doherty was coming right in behind him he knew he was there it was awkward for McNeil but he managed to get his head on it and send it behind for a Tottenham corner he's doing well McNeil and he has to continue it because the this game increases with Charleston just up going in between the pair of him and obviously Doherty just getting further forward good deep cross 2v1 here now do they go short they've gone short again Perisic and Son between them comes back out to Perisic who lays it off to Doherty now midway through the Everton half the players on the move inside the area as the ball is swung in Perisic will miss the header it was just over his head and the ball is behind for an Everton goal kick Everton who have Pickford's in goal. This back five of Coleman, Cody, Tarkovsky, Mikalenko, and McNeil. Ahead of them, Iwobi, Gay, and Anana with Mope and Gray up front. But we have seen a little bit of fluidity from Everton at times. They've largely stuck with the back five, but Dwight McNeil in particular on the left has managed to get forward on occasion. There's Iwobi challenges Huibier in the centre of the park. Gay wins the header for Everton. Crossfield pass attempted by Seamus Coleman but fires it straight into Song Hyun Min. And the ball is out with Perisic on the left hand side. Now cleared forward by Davis. Header is won by Connor Cody. Out to Tarkovsky. Sent forward by Coleman. Header won by Dyer for Tottenham just inside his own half. And play will remain with Tottenham midway through their own half. And Eric Dyer. Just think looking at the wider areas and this right hand side they've got to go quicker Son's getting it on the left going quick down the left is Son as it won't be there for company Son will pull it back to Huibier back to Son once more who whips the ball in cleared away by Tarkovsky it's, it's just the positioning of Tarkovsky and Cody as the ball is sent out of play you can see why Everton have the joint best defence in the Premier League coming into this round of matches it's, it's just experience they seem to be working so well you together straight the away as the ball come out Cody's driving them forward as well it's the pair of them you can hear the supporters saying come on you Spurs they realize that if they go a little bit quicker a little bit wider earlier we've got an issue and this won't go down very very well will it Richarlison no Richarlison is down on the edge of the D Paul Tierney has stopped play and Jordan Pickford is raising a hand as well so medical attention now as the medical staff come on for Tottenham's Richarlison how would you assess his game so far up against his former club he's had some good spells he's got some good areas that left foot shot away but I was just thinking he's going inside a lot so if I'm the, if I'm the left back Kalenko playing at the left of a three I'm happy seeing him in front of me I think he needs to come a little bit wider and, and really test out where does McNeil go there what does he do you see and Lucas Moura will he be the one who will replace him but when you're holding your calf is it a dead calf from a kick is he getting some tightness some fatigue in that yes no Kulisevsky on the bench he's still out for Tottenham might be back Antonio Conte said for Manchester United difficult to tell at the moment with Kulisevsky with Charleston just gingerly back up to his feet Reminder on Five Live Premier League Sunday tomorrow Leeds against Arsenal from 2 o'clock Liverpool against Manchester City from 4.30 our commentary this evening 
Clarissa Shields against Savannah Marshall. The big fight from the O2 is on Five Live this evening from 10 o'clock. You can listen to the undercard on Five Sports Extra from 7.30. And I've been informed that the former Tottenham captain Gary Mavertz is here today in the stands watching on. He's been at the Tottenham Community Centre nearby unveiling a new defibrillator for community use. Fans have raised £2,000 to pay for that. We'll be hoping for a breakthrough for Tottenham in this second half, but this doesn't. Michael Brown looked very good for Richarlison. No, it doesn't. It looks like it could be. Is it Basuma who's getting ready to come on as the replacement, but it's whether it's a kick. But I've seen Antonio Conte being asked the question, what's the problem? And really, is there something wrong? Is it a kick? I just feel like he's one of those managers are saying, you can stay on a little bit longer, let's see how you get on. Well, he's walking gingerly, Richarlison, and he is going straight down the tunnel so for further assessment, and the replacement indeed is Eve Basuma. Arrived this summer from Brighton, 30 million pounds. And he has played in all but one of their matches, Tottenham, since arriving. Just the two Premier League starts, though. So he is on. And it will mean a bit of a midfield reshuffle for Tottenham. Because Basuma certainly won't be taking up the Richarlison role. So he's, he's gone to the base, hasn't he? Straight yeah. away. Looks like Benson Kerr is going to be the one who's going to try and occupy a higher position, but it's different to a Richarlison position. I thought they would have been a little bit braver. Tottenham coming forward, ball into the area. Harry Kane meets it on the volley, beaten away by Pickford. Comes to Son, who blazes over from 14 yards. Tottenham's best move of the match. Oh, oh. To hit this like he does, we all know it's coming, and he doesn't disappoint Harry Kane. He just pulls away, is he in an offside position? He waits, his run's good, it's a deep cross. And to hit this on the volley, sensational, straight at Pickford, big, big save. It's sweet as you like, and into the deck, top left hand, and then Son comes with that rebound and just put it over. That's it, isn't it? It's, it's the control that he has whilst getting the power to hit it down into the ground. And it flies so up at Pickford with some pace, and it's a very decent stop from Everton's number one as Benton Kerr will close down. And Benton Kerr closes down Jordan Pickford as well, having closed down Cody. Pickford just does enough to get it away. Late challenge there, and Moybier goes down. And that is a very deserved yellow card for Adrissa Gay on Pierre Emil Moybier. Just completely lost control of what he was doing there, Gay. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Wonder what the referee sees. He's right in front of it. It's very, very high. Studs into the knee. If he stays down for a long period of time, it could be in a little bit of trouble because this is one thing I've said with VAR now. When you start seeing all the different angles, you stay and wait, it, it can be slightly different. I think he's just missed it, but it's slightly dangerous and these are, the, these are the ones that can go really against you. If it just hits you, if it hits his leg full on with yeah. the studs, yeah. he would have oh, been Oh, that def definite red card with that. It's one of those, as you say, if the contact is more, because it's a glancing contact in the end. But as you say, it, it's knee height. But yellow cards, I think, probably the right decision just because of the lack of contact there. But he wasn't in control, and that's another thing they'd look at. Free kick swung in by Tottenham. Headed on by Dyer. Harry Kane will send it out to Doherty, who drives. Well, blocked away by Mikalenko, who goes down. Tottenham wants to take the throw quickly. Paul Tierney has said no. Let's just make sure Mikalenko is OK. He's holding his knee. It's not a head injury, but it was rather leathered into him from close range. And Paul Tierney, given that the ball had gone out, says, well, we might as well make sure that the Ukraine international is all right. And he is. He's up to his feet. Yeah, Harry Kane just sets it. Doherty comes right across and hits the side of his knee. Now he's taking the throw to good effect with Perisic down to the byline, clears the ball away, Tottenham throw. And although this change has been enforced for Tottenham, Richarlison going off, Basuma coming on, the little tactical reshuffle, Son pushing up with Kane with more of a two. It's given Tottenham a bit of a new spring in their step as they win it on halfway and the stadium is responding to that as well. This stadium which has seen them win their last seven Premier League home games in a row. The best run for over five years. 
Tottenham in possession. Nil-nil, ten minutes gone in the second half as they come down the left-hand side. The ball in, looking for Son. Just couldn't get the power on it. Almost shouldered it towards goal from five yards. And Pickford was there. Yeah, good run. Great ball from Kane. Perisic just gets into some space. Tries to get his ball across. Son under a little bit of pressure, a little bit of contact. Alenko just heads it. Looks like he's going near post, but Pickford gathers comfortably. Here is Doherty, 360 to Hoybier. Son, nice footwork. Hoybier, this is so much better from Tottenham and over the top looking for Doherty. And as I say that, too much on it from Hoybier. And it's through with Pickford. Yeah, that's great play. Son, everybody off their seats. Sort of a little sort of Michael Flatley move, wasn't it? A little step, fast feet. And Everton are looking to waste more time. With supporters not, not best pleased, but. Spurs have got to take more risk, get forward, go for it in my opinion. Everton who are currently moving up to 11th in the Premier League above Liverpool. By a single point, Liverpool with two games in hand, commentary of their match. Huge match against Manchester City on 5 Live from 4.30 as Tottenham come down the left-hand side once more. Cleared away well by Tarkovsky, Tottenham will get the throw moving quickly. Here is Harry Kane, left-hand side of the penalty area. Pulls it back to Bentanker out to the left-hand side once more. The delivery is looking for Son, who lets it run. It's Doherty, it's straight to Pickford, who spills it. Oh, is he brought down there, Harry Kane? Yes, he was! Jordan Pickford diving in on the England captain, and it is a penalty to Tottenham. Kane does so well, and Pickford just spills it. The shot's right through a few bodies as he dives to his right. He's saying to the referee, he's trying to plead his innocent whether VAR can step in, Doherty back post, and as he spills it, to see if there's any contact. Oh, Kane engineers it, you know. He certainly engineers it. This is going to be so interesting. Pickford saying no, there's a touch of contact between them, but Kane certainly goes over the top of it. Will it be enough? Will VAR change the, their opinion? They both lay down sort of dead on the floor, don't they? Thinking, what's the referee going to do? This is another huge VAR talking point. Because I think Harry Kane's already going over. He knows the contact is coming from Jordan Pickford. There's not a huge amount of contact there. Anyway, when Pickford does make it, Pickford doesn't get the ball. Do you think we'd already see the check? Have they already made the mind up here, Vicky? He's pushing everyone away to the penalty spot. Would he already be getting called, the referee? Well, we think... don't, yeah, we don't hear VAR, but, but the fact that Kane's see what I'm saying? The, the referee spot, exactly. looks he's like he's already out. given it. Watch this on Match of the Day. Have your say with Robbie and Chris on 606. Lines open now, 08085 909 693. Should Tottenham have this penalty? They Which know Harry each Kane's other so well. Yep. This is the point. Mind games is Pickford stood on the six yard area. Huge moment of the match. He missed one and scored one in midweek against Eintracht Frankfurt. It's Harry Kane from the spot against Jordan Pickford. And Kane fires it into the bottom corner. Everton may protest about the award of the spot kick, but Harry Kane makes no mistake from 12 yards. And Tottenham have the lead against Everton, 1-0. He stays, he looks at it, upright, you know what he does. Pickford goes to go left, goes strong to his right-hand side, but the power, the accuracy, as it goes right into the corner. Wonderful strike by Harry Kane, he made it. Obviously, there'll be discussions whether it was the right decision or not. But in those positions, how well did he understand the pressure and have that composure? You can see the delight, the manager just pumps his fist. Big moment for Spurs. The Everton players are taking it in turns to continue to express their discontent with Paul Tierney. It's just been Idrissa Gay. Now it's Damare Gray. Neil Mope is going to have a word as Paul Tierney walks past. They are so furious about the award of that penalty. And it's one, Michael, if it's not given, I don't, VAR doesn't say go and have a look at it. Does, does he need to go and see that? I, I, you know, I think he should go and have a look. I mean, listen, let's, let, let's be clear. We've only seen two reruns. We normally get a lot more, don't we, of the angle. We didn't see that much on this occasion to be fully clear and we might get a few more clips of it later well, but you um, missed your cue 400 appearances oh no I'm waiting oh, for no. you 400
400th appearance. Well done, Michael Brown. Here to keep you right. 400th appearance. He said he'd score. Harry yeah, I did. Kane he waited. Does score for 12 yards. I was overtaken by the controversy <laughs> of the penalty. Kane will say, look, Pickford didn't get anything on the ball and he got something on me. But that is something they look at in the Premier League as Everton are in position. The intent of the attacker and the intent of the defensive player. Now, again, Pickford does go diving in because he spilled the ball. How much contact is made? Is Kane initiating it? He's put his arm forward and Harry Kane engineers and wins that penalty. Is the contact? It looks like there is. But without his reaction, Harry Kane, they don't get the penalty. When and he's see already more going clip, down. When we see yeah. more clips, and it, it might be match of the day tonight, before we can do that, to understand what's just happened. Yeah, 10.25 BBC One, have your say with Robbie and Chris. 08085 909 693. What do you think? Deserve penalty for Tottenham? Or do Everton have a right to feel aggrieved? Here is Alex Awobi. It is 1-0 from the spot from Harry Kane. Tamare Gray out to Iwobi on the right-hand side. And the ball is played back now. And Everton, who have sat at times in this defensive back five, will now have to find a way to come forwards with Iwobi, trailing as they are by a goal to nil. Everton, who have won just one of their last 19 Premier League games against Tottenham. And it's Tottenham who have the lead on five lives, 17 minutes gone in this second half. Here is Bintanker, dispossessed by Anana, who had a big chance at 0-0 in the first half for Everton. Here is Dwight McNeil down the left-hand side, plays the ball straight into Doherty, and it will bounce out for an Everton throw. It's how they react now, isn't it? This Everton team, I think you can hear the atmosphere, sensational noise all around us. This is a really important day for Spurs. You know that home record that we're talking about, the position that they go to in the table if they could hold on. Long way to go though. Cleared up towards halfway by Spurs, will be picked up by Connor Cody. Yes, Tottenham looking for their eighth Premier League win in a row. If they hold on for this victory or add to the one goal advantage they have, this will be their best start to a Premier League season after 10 games in their history. It will take them just a point behind leaders Arsenal. It will take them level on points with Manchester City. As Anana plays the ball in its poor, it's straight into the arms of Hugo Lloris. He's not in a rush now, is he? Notably. He'll just wait, he'll have a little look and they'll build up the possession. It's always a tricky one when you go a goal ahead, Vicky, when you whether you, you feel like you, you want to keep that momentum up, whether you just wait a little bit. And I do feel it just suits them today to actually keep moving forward. They've got that protection now. Basuma Everton looking to the bench and it's Calvert Lewin possibly getting stripped. Yeah, it made his comeback from injury in the last match against Manchester United, Dominic Calvert Lewin. His only appearance this season from the bench. They need something, Everton. They trail by a goal to nil. Harry Kane's penalty, which Everton were very unhappy about the award of. Doherty in possession. Plays it back to Romero. Um, we have to go back to the point we were making, Michael, before the goal was scored. It's Charleston's injury, Basuma coming on, a tweak in formation, Son a bit closer to Kane, and it led to a couple of good openings before the penalty as well. Or did you feel it was coming anyway for Tottenham? As Son, brilliant skill in the centre of the park, bearing down on goal, drives, blocked by Tarkovsky from 25 yards. And Iwobi will pick it up for Everton. He will now try and counter. Was Iwobi put back there? Yes, he was. And it will be a free kick to Everton midway inside their own half. Tottenham 1, Everton 0. Tarkovsky's like a one-man wall. Great block. Son drives forward. Incredible decision. He's under pressure. Drisha Gernigay coming tight. Just a little, little flick. Leaves him. Gets forward. I'm thinking if he can score this, if he can get his shot away, it would be certainly an incredible goal. A great block. Calvert Lewin is preparing to come on for Everton. He's stripped and ready. Everton in possession back from Tarkovsky all the way to Jordan Pickford, who plays it out. Good ball to find Anana. Left by Cody, so Anana will turn and 
play it out to the right-hand side and Alex Iwobi over the halfway line. Tottenham leading 1-0 here on Five Live. Iwobi in field to Anana. And for the first time in this match, it's Tottenham's turn to sit back in that defensive five as Dwight McNeil tries to get past Doherty, who stands up well, and that's well defended by Doherty. The first time he's been tested, really. In that defensive position. McNeil tries to drive it right to the line, but... You see the substitutions now that Everton are looking at, try and make a change, try and create something, try to do something different. Yep, double change. Calvert Lewin is on for Neil Mope, who's had a quiet afternoon. And James Garner is on for Seamus Coleman. So, potential switch up in formation here for Everton as well as Coleman. Races off the pitch. Everton still the half to play, but trailing by a goal to nil. Let's see how that affects the, the change. Garner will want to get in possession. It's actually a Wobi who's dropped into that right sided position of the five. Garner comes into the three. You know he's got wonderful technique, good range of passing. He's got to get on the ball sooner rather than later. Yep, so they are sticking with the five, Everton, and having praised Alex Awobi to the skies in his central midfield role. He drops back into another versatile position you've, that you've he has. Well, you've done that well with the, the midfield role, I'm going to put you at right wing back. <laughs> well, he has slotted in at wing back before, but certainly central midfield is something that, somewhere that Frank Lampard sees him as being established at. But, but needs must, we were saying before the match, Everton with very few options defensively. So if you want to change things up in midfield you have to adjust a little bit they're the missing Nathan Patterson in that right back position who's done really really well great youngster when he comes back that leaves the pain across the defensive options for Everton but they're just looking at it now it's, it's, it's set up wise how does Garner drop in to help a Wobie can he get out of there the Spurs are starting to dominate again they lead by a goal to nil here on five live 23 minutes gone in this second half Harry Kane from the spot have your say on the award of that penalty though should it have stood should VAR have got involved lines open for 606 08085 909 693 Robbie and Chris follow the conclusion of this match here on Five Live as Tottenham come forward once again all back across the six yard area for Pickford to clear under pressure from Son and Pickford over the halfway line, headed forward by Romero, met by Harry Kane, Tottenham's goal scorer. Back to Benton Kerr, and now Davis, and Tottenham again, just moving it around nicely. Antonio Conte talked about the mental fatigue that they experienced in midweek, beating Eintracht Frankfurt here 3-2, coming top of the group, knowing that a win in their next match against Sporting Lisbon will see them qualify for the knockout stages of the Champions League, but being pegged back late on by 10 men, not quite the way they wanted the night to finish, but they did the job. They got the three points and they're heading for three points here. Just the one goal in it. And Tottenham are in possession with Bissouma on for the injured Richarlison. Not the matchup with his former club that he would have wanted Richarlison going off in this second half. But the scoreline one that Tottenham fans will certainly take. Here is Doherty outside the penalty area, right hand side, lays it up to Benton Kerr. Plays the ball in, there's no one really in there for Tottenham, so Iwobi can take a touch and send it back to Pickford, who was closed down by Perisic. Now that Lewin then, challenging with Ben Davis, and the decision goes against the Everton substitute. Eric Dyer just had his 9 iron out, didn't he, with a lovely clip out to the right-hand side, and the build-up, good overlap run. Benson, uh, good ball in. Iwobi just brings it down, takes a risk, Pickford scampers to clear it, it was a short pass. Back to his goalkeeper. Here is Hoybier out to the left-hand side as Tottenham look to build once more. Perisic will send it back to Hoybier and now Basuma. Everton dropping deep, trying to keep it at 1-0 for now as Romero to Kane. Lovely turn, bounces on Pickford once more. Fortunately for Everton to Iwobi, who will clear out of the penalty area. Kane, sensational in those positions back to goal he always knows what's around him which way to turn and he's so quick at getting his shot away pickford understands he's got to be ready he's upright good save to the right hand side but 
wonderful. He's after Jimmy Greaves' record and I think he's eight behind him, Vicky, and I don't think it'll take long. He is indeed as the ball goes out of play for a Everton goal kick. The Tottenham fans feeling it should have been a corner, but yes, Harry Kane closing down that all-time Tottenham scoring record. And again, into double figures for the season. 10 goals in 14 games in all competitions now. Nine in 10 Premier League games. I, I tell you what, as the ball goes out of play for an Everton throw on the halfway line, if it wasn't for Haaland, and we know why it's about Haaland, because we know the numbers, but Kane is having such a fantastic season. And, and every time we talk about strikers in the Premier League, it's, it's Erling Haaland, understandably. But come on, Harry Kane's having a stormer. And, and do you know what he's thinking as well? That could have been me. And I know the Spurs supporters will want to hear that, but you'll be thinking, I want to be scoring so many. He wants to do it with Spurs, but ultimately, Ireland's getting those rewards that he was after. Yeah, the gentleman's agreement, not quite seen eye to eye with by Tottenham and Harry Kane, but he stayed. And one thing you can never fault with Kane, whether it's for club or country, is commitments. As Everton comes down the left-hand side with McNeil, the delivery is over the head of Calvert-Lewin and very calmly just about there by Perisic to Hugo Lloris. I think that's what Iwobi tried just a little bit before. Perisic comes across, we're winning, we're confident. It's a nice cushion chest back to the goalkeeper. But yeah, just going back to Kane, I mean, these super supporters understand what he brings to this club. Wonderful to have that attitude when things don't happen, things don't change, the goal return the leadership that he, he gives this group and still at it constantly. Ball in field from Tottenham and Ben Tunker will win the throw as Antonio Conte marches back to get the ball. His side leading by a goal to nil. 27 minutes gone in this second half. We've mentioned the 400th appearance, thanks to you, Michael, for Harry Kane. It's also the first time he's netted in five consecutive Premier League games, which I found quite remarkable, given how I've many goals he's one. scored. I like that one, brilliant, because he must have been so frustrated that other people had done it and not him. Everton do well it. to win possession, just by their own corner flag, away from Son and cleared by Cody over the halfway line. Tottenham 1, Everton 0. Very great dispossessed by... Ipasuma, very good challenge and here goes Harry Kane again as on ahead of him Harry Kane goes himself into the penalty area excellent block by James Tarkovsky and Iwobi will stop that going out for a throw Kane's gone over to try and win it back and he has won it back off Iwobi down by the corner flag Tottenham leading by a goal to nil against Everton here on five live as they're forced back towards the halfway line but again James Tarkovsky's made some brilliant, brilliant blocks in this match Do you know those two players there the desire from Kane driving forward I just felt Tarkovsky's got him here. He's ready, he's waiting. Kane's going to pull the trigger, try and get that shot across Pickford. Block comes in perfect. It's had a good game. It's had a good season with Everton after arriving in the summer. Big signing for them, as Cody turned out to be. Cody, who only joined because Godfrey and Mina picked up injuries on the opening day, but it's those sliding doors moments in football, isn't it? Tottenham in possession just inside their own half, leading by a goal to nil, Michael Brown. I, I still feel you're looking at the switch of play. Ever, no, Everton are, are narrow, they're sat in that back five. I think the space is there for Romero to get on it. Dotty to go wider again and Tess McNeil, but they, they just seem to be too patient. They're asking for trouble if they don't, you know, if they don't push forward now and see this game off. Everton will get a chance. Tottenham in possession, just inside their own half. A reminder, all the reaction to this match and the weekend's action, you can see the match of the day tonight, BBC One 1025, and download the Football Daily podcast as well from BBC Sounds. And we have big podcasts as well from both codes of rugby. Huge tournaments ongoing, the Women's Rugby Union World Cup. You can download Rugby Union Weekly for all the reaction to that. And the Rugby League World Cup as well. Downloads the Rugby League podcast on BBC Sounds. Quite McNeil and stayed down for Everton. It's <laughs> and Anana, it's too late. Yeah. But he's too late. He shouldn't even go in for that. Dwight McNeil's very, very lucky that it's not worse than that. He was second to all the time. And supply Paul Tini says play on advantage. It's right into the side of his head. It's got to be a little bit quicker than that. It's a late challenge. He shouldn't go for it. 
Yeah, fortunately, he is up to his feet, Dwight McNeil. I was just noticing there that because Anana was away down the left, Frank Lampard was, was saying to Paul Tierney, no, just, just leave it. Just, oh, OK, fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the free kick. But as you say, had to make sure Dwight McNeil's OK. It was a painful one. Two heads colliding. But McNeil is up to his feet. And Paul Tierney, what's he given him? Well, he hasn't given the free kick here. So he's giving it to Everton. It's a drop he stopped ball it for, the for head Everton. Injury, yeah, so they just he get stopped, the ball back yeah, and he rotate stopped it away there. So they were in possession. He's not giving it as a free kick, but Everton in possession. And away we go. As Michael Brown says, Tottenham won, Everton nil. 15 minutes plus out of time to play. Tottenham, as things stand, heading for eight Premier League home wins in a row. Their best start after 10 games to a Premier League season, this will be. It will take them just a point behind leaders Arsenal and level on points, although behind on goal difference with Manchester City. In less, Everton can't find a way back into this one. And Nana goes down. Basuma penalised. Everton free kick midway through the Tottenham half, left hand side. Again, Everton, they want to put the ball in the box to feel like set pieces is something that they can gain the advantage. They want to set it up rather than actually play a little bit quicker. They thought there was space there straight away for them to get into, but it's such a high line, similar to the one in the first half that we've seen. Justin McNeil and Gray just looking to put the delivery in. Yeah, and the Everton players, three of them standing offside at the moment. They will try and move back on as Gray swings the ball in. Right footed, the header is won and cleared away by Harry Kane on the edge of the six yard box back there defending. Song can't control. Everton will pick it up with Mikalenko in the centre circle. Everton trail Tottenham by a goal to nil. Here is Damari Gray, left hand side of the penalty area. Three Tottenham keepers in attendance with him. He'll do well to get past all of them. He's got down to the byline, does pull the ball across, but it's straight into Harry Kane, Tottenham's goal scorer. Back there defending once more. And he does really well, plays that off Dwight McNeil for a Tottenham throw. Yeah, Gray does very, very well. He's got three around him, that little step off drives to the line for that free kick. That's the chance I was talking about. Floated run right to the back post, Tarkovsky running onto things. Once you've got the block on the last man of your zonal, he's going to be favourite all the time, head it back across. And if it weren't for Kane's position in the six yard area, it's a big chance. And that was my point. They've got to just do a little bit more Spurs or they're inviting them to come right on top of them. And they, don't, they should be going on and actually getting that second goal. It's just the one at the moment, Kane's penalty. Lines open for 6.06, have your say on that spot kick. Everton were very unhappy about it. 08085 909 693 has Tottenham has stopped in their tracks. Doherty well dispossessed and now Dwight McNeil over the halfway line. Everton's still in this, they've given it away though. Benton Kirk, slightly challenged by Gray. And Gray saying he won the ball there. Benton Kerr has stayed down and the free kick has gone Tottenham's way. Yeah, he does, just wraps his foot around. Benton Kerr comes across and I was looking at the referee, thinks he's gonna, is he gonna issue a yellow card? I didn't think it was initially. Just thought it was an honest sort of attempt to try and flick it round. Bentica rolls over the top, tries to make the most of it. The right decision, Antonio Conte probably asking him if there's any more in it. But I didn't think there was, I think he got it right. So Romero will prepare to take this free kick for Tottenham. 12 minutes plus out of time to play. Tottenham 1, Everton 0. Here is Eric Dyer outside the centre circle. Plays it forwards to Ben Davis out on the left hand side. And we're, we're back to the first five minutes of the first half. Tottenham happy just to knock it around, but why not? They have the goal, but they've given it away there. That's sloppy. Tarkovsky will intercept inside his own half and plays it out to. Mikalenko, Antonio Conte pointing at Mikalenko, saying close him down as the header is cleared away by Dyer on the edge of his own penalty area. Here is James Garner out to Iwobi, right hand side. Back to Garner, plays the ball into the area and Lloris comes and takes that very well. Anana was right there with him, but Lloris gets there first. Well, we've seen Tottenham get a mix up about nobody taking control in the centre of the pitch, which nearly cost them in the first half. This delivery is brilliant. Lloris come in. Eric Dyer wondering, what do I do? Big shout, he had the confidence to leave it. Goalkeeper, great take on the edge of his six yard area. Both players appealing for it as the ball goes out of play. Son wins the throw for Spurs. And it's Salomon Rondon time for Everton. 
coming on for Idrissa Gay. So Calvert-Lewin is on, Rondon is on, and Everton still looking for a way back into this one. Still just the one goal they trail by. That's a thing, something to fight for straight away, 80th minute. Lampard decides to, to roll it and go for it. Doherty, oh, was he caught there, Mikolenko? That was a tired swing of the boots. Yellow card for Mikolenko. Free kick for Tottenham, level with the six yard box just outside the penalty area, right hand side. Yeah, that drop of the shoulder, Doherty. Just that training leg comes across just outside the area. Ty McNeil didn't even dare go near it. It wasn't, it wasn't even actually had any right to go near it, but then he was so frightened because it was on the edge of the area thinking penalty. Now a big chance here. Did they go to the edge of the area? Did they cut it back? With a fizzit right into Pickford, everybody all around him again. Well, we've seen Tottenham's prowess from the spot. They've scored more set-piece goals than any other Premier League side this season, including penalties. Everton have conceded the joint fewest before this match round from set pieces. This was a real issue for them last season. It has been improved. The sumo looks this, good on though, the edge, doesn't he? he yeah, looks it's good a on the dangerous edge. position. Son will leave it. Dinked into the six yard box. They don't use Basuma, who was in a lot of space. It's cleared away by Everton. Perisic will pick it up once more, and it's back to Doherty. And now Huibier, and they will exchange passes into the final eight minutes plus at a time. Tottenham 1, Everton 0 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium here on Five Live. Here is Huibier, just inside the Tottenham half, and this is where Everton have to try and find a way of keeping their shape but stealing the ball back because Tottenham in these positions it's hard for Everton to hurt them it's Tottenham looking to do that to the visitors once more they've won a throw Perisic does well down that left hand side Tottenham throw deep in Everton territory but they're just starting to take their time now Michael Brown well they are and you understand why it's going to try and see it out little mistakes like that just give Everton some belief they can come back into it you just know straight away as soon as they get into a wide area just try and stick some crosses in yeah, top of the from, pitch poor from Son just plays it straight out for a throw to Everton deep in their own territory Tottenham almost win it back and then the decision goes against Solomon Rondon who would have been away there it's a free kick to Tottenham just inside the Everton half and they'll be relieved that that's back, given didn't it? Yeah, I mean, yep. It went so flat that I think it was too obvious that I didn't even ask for it. It was just like, it's definitely got to give it. Yeah, Tottenham sucking the tempo out of this game, leading by a goal to nil. A win that would take them to a point behind Arsenal. Level on points with Manchester City. Seven minutes plus out of time to play on five live. Here is the goal scorer, Harry Kane, on the halfway line. Forward by Hoy Bier, Doherty will chase, McNeil is back there. Doherty gets there first, edge of the penalty area. Plays it back to Harry Kane, who swings the ball in, poor delivery, stabbed away by Everton, but will come straight back to Doherty, who lays it off to Kane once more. The two of them just slow the play down. Kane finds Doherty right hand side, cleared away well by Mikolenko. Hoybier was waiting to catch that on the volley, but Everton have brought it away. Here is Tamare Gray, wins the throw on the halfway line. Tottenham 1, Everton 0. Good position, Basuma coming across. Gray tries to step through, but a little bit of cramp Tarkovsky not only is he a blocker he's now the physio for Spurs as he tries to get Hoiberg's cramp out of his calf nice between them good sportsmanship and to be fair Hoiberg does get up pretty quickly and he's back in his own half and we play on Everton with the throw six minutes plus out of time to play I think Hoiberg thought it's Tarkovsky I'm going to get up because he's going to lift me up anyway so let him just get rid of this cramp and then I'll crack on here is Tarkovsky in possession for Everton, midway through the Everton half. Connor Cody is asking for it over on the far side. Tottenham just employing that press once more as we enter the final five minutes. Tottenham who lead 1-0 thanks to Harry Kane's penalty. 6.06 follows us on 5 Live. 08085 909 693. Book your call now to have your say on the weekend's action with Robbie and Chris as Eric Dyer under pressure plays the ball straight out of play Everton throw deep in Tottenham territory left hand side here is Dwight McNeil forced backwards well by Romero finds Damare Gray 
Gray forced to turn as well. That's good pressure He's by Benton. He's got Benzinger. to keep his position though, Romero. He's getting sucked in and getting around. He didn't get the first flick and then he's trying to go and make up for it. Don't leave the slots like that. I mean, it's an experienced player doing it. Harry Kane will collect on the halfway line. Good header by Bissouma and Kane will be Benton Kerr. Down the right-hand side, Son wants it. It goes instead in plenty of space to Hoybier. Turns, shoots. It will be eight Premier League wins at home in a row for Tottenham. Their best start after ten games to a Premier League season in their history. 2-0, they lead Everton. Fantastic goal. The manager down below was driving the run from Bentinker. Harry Kane just waited, he delayed. That's what you want late on the game. Forward runs and puts it. Hoybier didn't disappoint. He goes central right in the edge of the area. Takes his touch. A Wobie goes tight. But it was a great diversion run from Son round the left, which allowed Hoiberg a little bit more time. He stopped, he waited, curled it, right-footed. Top corner, there might have been a little deflection. He won't be bothered. And finally Spurs got that second goal. Calmness under growing pressure as Everton closed him down, but there was far too much space as that ball came in. And Tottenham now will make a change and eat out the minutes. Stamenson Sanchez is on for Christian Romero. Well, they had the two-goal lead against Eintracht Frankfurt. In the end, they saw that one out. But it's taking chances to finish a game off. And with three minutes plus out of time to play, you feel that that's what Tottenham have done here. Well, they're just waiting for that space. And it was about the forward runs that they needed to do on momentum. It was the manager who actually drove it. Benson Kerr got round the outside. And then Hoybjerg, having that pr protection with Bazuma, was allowed to make that run. He's got good energy. And what not people will notice, what Son did. Son changed the whole outlook for him. His, his touch was under his feet. It wasn't great as it will become tight. That run gave him a touch more time. He picked his spot and, and ended up in that top corner. Finally, Spurs get that breathing space. Everton in possession, it bounces off Rondon though, midway through the Tottenham half. And Tottenham will bring it away with Bissouma. And the decision goes Tottenham's way as well. Everton just need to keep their heads here. It looks as though the game has gone in terms of the points, but they don't need to give away any silly yellow cards or even worse. You can hear the supporters singing the appreciation for the manager. His record since he's come in the, in the building, is it third? Behind Klopp and Pep Guardiola. I think that tells you everything from where the club were and just being allowed to, to bring some of his players in and improve the squad and can they continue? Here come Everton though, looking to get a goal back late on. Damare Gray out to the right-hand side, pulls it back to Alex Iwobi. Tottenham lead by two goals to nil. Iwobi's ball into the penalty area, cleared away by Davinson Sanchez. And Everton will pick it up once more. 90 seconds plus out of time to play. Tottenham lead by two goals to nil here on Five Live. Damare Gray picks it up out on the right-hand side and plays it back to Tarkovsky and Cody once more. Ooh, players by Jordan Pickford inside, kick inside Tottenham's half. As Mikolenko sends it out to the left-hand side. Here is McNeil, Rondon misses it, Cavett lewins there, goes down. The ball is behind and it's been given as a goal kick. No penalty for Everton, no goal back either. And the ball goes right across, Perisic makes that decision to put his foot out. Just gets a little bit of contact, Calvert-Lewin over. They're thinking, here we go, is he going to give something? But he's very animated, isn't he? On the bench, Tony Conte asking for everything. He's now saying, slow down, looking to make a change. And this young man in particular, he hasn't had many minutes. He's waiting for a long time to, to get that chance. And Nice time to come on. Yeah, it will be a double change. Mora and Jed Spence, that young man, preparing to come on that Michael mentions. Harry Kane, brilliant work down the right-hand side. Very well covered at the back by Everton, who will clear away with Connor Cody. Chester down nicely by Basuma to Sanchez for Tottenham, who lead by two goals to nil as we wait to see how much out of time 
there will be. It's all the way back with Hugo Lloris inside his own penalty area. Five minutes of added time. Tottenham 2, Everton 0. Here is Perisic down the left-hand side. Perisic into the penalty area. Might have to go alone. Excellent sliding challenge. Once again, James Tarkovsky back there. That's a fabulous challenge. And it's behind for a Tottenham corner. But Tarkovsky can hold his head up high this evening. Yeah, the art of defending, the desire to keep going, to lead for his team. Brave challenge, just gets his foot in. and Great recovery run. But... Another chance for Spurs, they're going to ring the changes down below and in these last five minutes, well, it's going to be difficult for Everton. Yeah, we saw the double change being prepared, it's actually a triple change, Oliver Skip preparing to come on as well as Tottenham take the corner short once more, leading by two goals to nil here on Five Live, into added time, four minutes of that left to play. Ben Davis in possession on the halfway line for Tottenham, plays it down the left hand side and will be kept in well as well they're not committing too many players forward one of them was son good sliding interception by Garner back there for everton and alex iwobi plays it back to Garner, and now tarkovsky once more and tottenham will just stay outside the penalty area as everton spread it out to the left hand side and mikhalenko intercepting sliding challenge by davinson sanchez and he and Doherty between them tidy up and he Basuma has it in the center of the park Sanchez does well, try to release ball, ball right down the, the right hand channel of Spurs, but Sanchez just gets into that good position. The substitutes might not get on here, they're all still waiting for the board to go up, but so just before those substitutions, you're looking and seeing this result in the next game's Manchester United. They went to Arsenal, disappointment. This is the one after that home game, Newcastle away, Bournemouth. If they want to be in the mix, They've got to get a result at Manchester United to prove that they've got that something different this season and different times, haven't they? And you can listen to that match on Five Live, 8.15 on Wednesday, full commentary. So here comes the triple change. Matt Doherty making way. And Jed Spence on after arriving this summer from Middlesbrough for his second Premier League appearance. Look at the hug that Antonio Conte is giving to Matt Doherty there. He almost strangled him. He's caught him in a headlock. But we know how passionate this man is and he knows that this is a big win for Tottenham if they can see this out, which they should do so now. Leading 2-0, two minutes of added time to play. Lucas Moura applauds and gives the double high five to Harry Kane and Oliver Skip will replace Rodrigo Benson Kevin. He gets smacked over the head by Conte. <laughs> well, he's happy, at least. But, but you know, he's one who's playing all the time. So the manager, when you haven't been sort of playing as regular as you'd expect, it's different. Miscue for once by Tarkovsky. Could let Son in down the left-hand side. Son down to the byline. Can he pick out a white shirt? Left-hand side of the penalty area. Nice footwork up against Iwobi. Son will... Lay it off now, receives it back, edge of the box. Can he find room for the shot? No, he's forced back with a little push there. But he's done well to retain possession. We have almost played the minimum five minutes added on. 90 seconds left to play. As Tottenham have it down the left-hand side of the penalty area. And again, it's another very good sliding challenge. And again, it's from James Tarkovsky. And again, it's a Tottenham corner. They lead 2-0. Yeah, they do. Step over, driving the line. And Harry Kane, just that little scratch of his head, sat on the bench thinking, not a bad evening's work again from him. He's called the penalty, they got things underway. Hoybier added the second late on. And that's why Tottenham are heading for the three points. Here is Son over on the far side. Can they add a third goal to go with those three points? We're into the final minute of added time. And Tottenham have Everton right where they want them. Pen deep in their own half. It's back with Cody now inside his own penalty area, lifts it forward, Calvert-Lewin chests it down. Can Everton at least get on the score sheet this evening? Dwight McNeil falls backwards to Vitaly Mikalenko. And in field now to Anana. As Rondon through the centre, finds Gray instead. Conte still out on the edge of his technical area, barking instructions. As McNeil picks it up and Everton pass it around in triangles, but that won't avail them. 15 seconds to play. They're heading for back-to-back -back defeats after losing to Manchester United. Seven games unbeaten in all competitions before that. Picked up their first two Premier League wins of the season. 
before that defeat to Manchester United. But they've come unstuck here at Spurs and it is fortress Tottenham Hotspur Stadium once again. Eight Premier League home wins in a row and a big clenched double fist from Antonio Conte as the final whistle goes. Tottenham are now just a point behind leaders Arsenal. They're level on points with Manchester City and Michael Brown, they mean business this season. Well, they do and that'll be the test as I said against Manchester United, but good performance, started really well. Obviously, we were a little bit worried about fatigue, etc., from playing Champions League late comeback in the week, but the quality was there. There were some good performances. The ground down Everton, the penalty will be discussed, I'm sure, which makes the decision. And in the centre of the pitch, as we speak now, Kane and Pickford, he's laughing. Kane at Pickford, he knows he's sort of engineered it. Pickford shaking his head and very, very disappointed, but a great evening for Spurs, another record in the Premier League and yeah, are they going to be the real deal? Conti seems to be, great reaction at the end, he realised that was a big performance from him. Yeah, Tottenham's best start to a Premier League season after 10 games in their history. And just going back to that conversation that, that Pickford was having with Harry Kane, he's now gone over to the officials, the referee Paul Tierney. That will be the big talking point for 606, which is coming up shortly for match of the day tonight, which you can catch on BBC One 10:25. But a final thought from Michael Brown on that. It's, that's the key decision, is it? The penalty, should it have been overturned? It's, it's a key decision. Chris is going to back the striker and Robbie's going to go against it. Definitely. There's a nice one for you boys to go continue with. Well, let's find out. It is time for 606 on Five Live. Robbie and Chris, it's all yours.